Uh, welcome everyone to today's Viva Connections and SharePoint Framework Biweekly Sync. Today is February the 23rd. I am your host, Gary Trinder. I am a cloud developer advocate at Microsoft. Today on the agenda, we have the usual latest update on the SharePoint framework. Then we're going to have a roundup of uh, updates across all of patterns and practices. We'll have the uh, picture time, uh, sorry, the together mode picture time, and then we'll have the uh, the key events of the day. We actually have three demos today, so uh, we'll make sure that we'll get through these updates pretty quickly. Um, three awesome demos and also a new speaker. Uh, welcome, Matteo. Um, OK, so moving on. So. Microsoft 365 community is full of resources to help you uh, build on Microsoft 365. Uh, we have absolutely tons of uh, community videos that can be uh, found on the community uh, YouTube channel. Uh, we also now have a brand new LinkedIn group for discussions. So if you are on LinkedIn, uh, we have a brand new group. Uh, pop along, uh, put in Microsoft 365 and Power Platform community in the search. You will find us and you'll be able to uh, request membership. We'll approve that pretty quickly. Um, and then you'll be able to get in there and you'll be able to share things that you've been working on, uh, resources, ask questions, and just generally chat with the rest of the community. Um, we've also got lots of open source projects that we're actually going to cover with the updates. So I'm, I'll quickly move uh, move on. Uh, we also have a sample gallery. So if you're looking for something uh, to get started, learn from, um, that some a member of the community has, has already built and, and, and shared with everyone to, to to use and learn from uh, then check out the uh, the sample gallery aka ms slash community slash samples and if you can't remember any of these uh, urls or uh, resources after the call just remember this one link it's aka.ms slash community slash home that will take you to the uh, community homepage where you'll find links to all these uh, different resources Let's quickly cover uh, the different community calls that we have on offer. We have the Microsoft 365 and Power Platform weekly call. This takes place uh, every Tuesday. Um, we also have the monthly Power Platform, Microsoft Identity Platform, Office add-ins um, calls as well. Um, we also have the bi-weekly uh, 365 and Platform community call, as well as this call, the Viva Connections and SharePoint uh, framework call. Again, uh, if you can't remember all of those URLs, you can get all of the invite from aka ms slash community slash calls from the uh, from the main community website now if you are interested in presenting to come on here and, and, and share your knowledge and the cool things that you've been working on then we absolutely encourage you to uh, put your name forward um, so uh, just like Matteo uh, today, become that uh, that, that new speaker um, come on here and uh, and, and tell us uh, yeah, you know, everything that you've been uh, working on and the cool things that, that you've been doing. So uh, if you are interested in doing that, um, go to AKMS slash uh, community slash request slash demo, uh, and you'll be able to, uh, to, to actually submit. OK, the next Microsoft 365 and Power Platform uh, call, so this is the uh, the weekly uh, Tuesday call. Uh, we have three sessions coming up. Uh, so we have uh, Aisha Bash, uh, who is going to cover dynamically creating Microsoft Teams meeting using uh, Microsoft Graph. This has been part of the uh, Azure Communication Services uh, series. Uh, so this is the, the, the next uh, part of that series. Uh, I will be presenting uh, the second part of the Teams Toolkit Learn Path, so I'll be covering building a bot using Teams Toolkit for Visual Studio Code. And we'll have uh, David Russo, uh, who will be covering remotely debug your Microsoft Teams apps from any device using Volon JS. Uh, David, I believe over to you. Yes, awesome. Thank you, Gary. Uh, well, friends, all these areas to contribute, you might be like, not quite sure where to start. Sharing is Caring has you covered. This is a program that provides hands-on safe space guidance. What does that mean? It means we're going to get together in live calls, not recorded, so you can ask any and all questions you'd like, uh, and you're going to learn together with other passionate, like-minded individuals within the community. Uh, we had to reschedule some things, so we got some schedules coming up for March. Definitely check that out. Uh, be on the lookout for those who signed up, and we will get you emails and invites and all that jazz, uh, and we absolutely look forward to continuing to collaborate with you. Now, once you have done that, we absolutely also want to recognize you for all the amazing work that you're doing. So we've got our recognition program, powered by Credly. Been seeing all those awesome badges. A few more are going to come out in the next few days. Uh, we've seen the new ones for ACES, CLI, 
PowerShell, list formatting, the list goes on. See what I did there? List formatting, list goes on. Yes, we want to recognize you. We do need you to opt in. AK.ms slash community slash recognition. Only need to do it once and we will get you taken care of. Love everything you're doing. It's our way of saying thank you. Gary, back to you. Thank you, David. And latest updates on SharePoint Framework. Vesa, over to you. Yep. Uh, quick updates in here. First of all, today is sixth anniversary uh, for SharePoint Framework general availability. That means almost seventh anniversary when, when we went public uh, with SharePoint Framework, which was on May 4th, 2017, if I remember correctly. Let's go to the following slide. Um, the growth uh, on the usage is, is um, well, growing rapidly still. Um, it is actually insane to watch the charge um, because they are going to the right direction, uh, which makes us obviously happy. And that seems to indicate that um, developers are pretty happy with SPFX because we see a lot of, lot of uh, submissions even on the store and the growth and usage is growing. Uh, all the time. Let's go to the following slide. Uh, quick update on the on the situation. 1.16.1 is the currently uh, recommended version for uh, production. Interesting little black box uh, on there. Um, that uh, 1.17 preview release will happen actually later today. Uh, that's probably actually emoji, or I don't know. Um, I think the, so, yeah. The, yeah. So 1.17 uh, uh, preview release will happen uh, today as we get the packages rolling out, um, and 1.17 will happen within, I would say, end of March, early April, uh, with additional updates. And there will be actually a lot of updates also rolling on the server side, so you don't actually need to update on 1.17 to get all of these goodies which are coming out. Uh, within spring. But that's a quick update on, on the timelines and what's happening there. Let's go to the BMP projects. Thanks, Vesa. OK, so let's cover the open source uh, projects. Uh, PMP JS, uh, do we have Julie? Yes, we do. Hello. And so we have uh, a couple, a double release going on. So we did release version uh, 3.12 on the 10th of February. Uh, it had some uh, general fixes in it. Uh, they're all on this slide. I don't have to really read them to you all. Uh, what we did have is one of the things uh, that was happening is we had uh, the new taxonomy APIs in um, PMPJS. And what we were finding is that the add endpoints weren't working. And what we realized is that they needed a token on them. And at first we thought this should just work. We should be able to just add a token to all the calls because we have the token. Uh, and so we rolled that out in version 3.12. Unfortunately, that is not the case. And so some people were getting the uh, unauthorized access exception when creating or updating items because that token was there and it uses cookie auth and not token auth and all that blah, blah, blah. So we re uh, quickly released 3.12.1, which reverted that situation. And so that is what that release a couple days later was all about. So just an update for you all on that uh, situation. Uh, if you need to check out a new PR that got uh, merged in, you can always check out our V3 nightly builds. They will have all the latest and greatest from the previous day, whatever has been merged. Uh, so this is a way to preview those updates before we actually do our official monthly release. As usual, follow us M365 PMPJS on Twitter. And uh, that is all I have for today. Back to you, Gary. Great. Thanks, Julie. Um, so we have CLI for Microsoft 365 update. We have a new uh, 6.3 uh, beta release. Uh, absolutely tons of new commands. There's actually 29 commands in, in this beta release, which is quite incredible to say that we're in February. Uh, There's a lot of commands. Uh, and then commands across Azure AD, Planner, Purview, SharePoint, including SharePoint Framework as well. Uh, so there's new additions in there. If you want to try it out, then use the at beta tags. Uh, if you want to get that from NPM or from uh, uh, Docker. Uh, check out the release notes uh, for the full details in there. There's lots more enhancements and bug fixes as well. Um, but if you want to keep up with all of the updates on, on CLI for Microsoft 365, then uh, please follow us on, on Twitter at CLI and Microsoft 365 or get involved in the, in the conversation in the community uh, on Discord as well. Moving on, uh, so we've got Microsoft Graph Developer Proxy. Uh, so this is for testing your applications that use uh, Microsoft 365 APIs like Microsoft Graph and SharePoint Online, but also any API as well, because it also supports uh, testing uh, any API that, that, that you've got. Um, we don't have any updates from the last release, which was uh, 
the 0.4 release. Uh, we have updated some of the documentation, so we've uh, refreshed our getting started tutorial um, as well. So uh, if you've not uh, checked out the graph developer proxy, please take a look through the tutorial, give feedback if, uh, if it's not that great, uh, and we'll sort that out. Uh, but we do have a new uh, release uh, coming next week, so uh, we'll have more to share in, in the next call about the V5 release. Uh, reusable SPFX controls, Alex. Thank you, Gary. Uh, so nothing new on this slide, but uh, we are preparing our next releases. Probably they will happen either uh, tomorrow or maybe on Monday. So uh, check out our Twitter account to see when the releases are there. They will uh, contain many, many issues for the last, like uh, issue fixes for the last few months, I believe. Uh, that's all I have. Back to you, Gary. Perfect. Thanks, Alex. Viva Connections Toolkit for Visual Studio Code. Vesa? Yes, nothing too dramatical in here either. Uh, we're looking into having 1.4 version, 0.4 version out, and then we'll do a blog post and announcement uh, on the preview. We'll, we are still collecting feedback and usage uh, on the tooling um, and with and releasing some set of videos pretty soon as well. So it's been delayed a bit because of my family vacation and all of that, but we'll get them out uh, soon as well. But that's quickly updates in here. It's really designed for SPFX development all up. So even though you would be using it for Viva Connection ACES, it actually does provide you a great set of uh, capabilities as such uh, for any SharePoint framework solution. So please test it out and provide us feedback. Great stuff. Uh, PMP Modern Search. Uh, so I don't think there's an update on, on this side, but it seems like there's lots of questions on the GitHub uh, repository. So usage is growing, which is all great. Um, so if you uh, wanting to build solutions that um, that, that use uh, search, uh, check out the uh, the PMP Modern Search web parts for, for your solution building needs. Uh, PMP SPFX samples, Hugo. Thank you. So we have some uh, SharePoint framework samples, uh, web parts and extensions. We have uh, four new updates. Uh, one is another chat GPT app, and it's uh, it was written by Joao Mendes, and it, it is done completely different from the other sample that we had. So it's always a great uh, example of different approaches for implementing the same thing. Uh, Martin Lindstuhl has updated his the copy view sample to add sorting to the lists and the views. And Harminder Singh has uh, created a new sample, which is a service help for Microsoft 365. So that actually allows people to be able to look at the web part and look at what's the status of all the Microsoft 365 services without having, having to be given global admin rights or any special rights like that, which is a great example. And then we have an update on the PMPJS sample by uh, Bo Cameron. I guess he's a new person in the community, never heard of him. Uh, but he took a sample that was already perfect because it was written by Julie Turner and uh, he upgraded it to SPFX 116. Um, we welcome new samples and we now have badges for people who contribute. So uh, please don't hesitate to uh, submit your samples. And then with that, let's pass it to David for SPFX ACES. Awesome. Thank you, Hugo. I don't have a sample from Bo, uh, but uh, maybe one day sadness. But we do have one from Harman to Singh on OneDrive information. So really cool way to use an ACE, show that personal information about your total size and remaining size and the state, all that good jazz. Thank you, Harminder. We love new samples. Check them out. We too have a badge for this. So definitely uh, take advantage of all these opportunities. Gary, back to you. Fantastic. Thank you. And we're now at picture time. Faisa. Yes. Uh, one second, one second, one second, sharing the screen. <laughs> uh, once again, selecting the right screen. Yes, I did. Excellent. Uh, there we go. Uh, we're already at to together mode uh, status. Uh, let's wait a few more seconds um, so we get all of the people in the room. I will actually enable my camera as well. Ooh, now that looks now starts looking good. A few more free seats. Free seats. I will put the recording on. That's probably maxed out now. That's looking really good. And let's do some hand of having everybody. Awesome. Oop, let's actually get rid of the Hugo Carter. Excellent. Thank you for everybody for joining. Good to have you on a call. And yes, Chris, we can see your face. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. <laughs> Thank you for joining once again. Awesome to have you on a call. Cheers. 
Good. Let's then go to the actual stars of today, right, Gary? Yep. So let's start with the demos. So first up, we have Michael. Are you ready? Take the screen. Right. Thanks. OK, can you see my screen? Yes, all good. Great. OK, so hi, everyone. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, whenever you are around the world under the snow. Um, today, I'm going to show you a sneak peek about possibilities around SharePoint REST API, but not those uh, whose we know, but whose we don't know. Introducing the um, SharePoint undocumented admin REST API. My name is Michael. I'm a Chief Solutions Developer at one point. I live in Nantes, France. Uh, you can reach me out on Twitter, GitHub, and I also have personal site when I share some stuff. So first of all, like I said, this I said, happy anniversary to SharePoint Framework. Yay. So we all know about those REST APIs. We're using them since the Stone Age, or almost. We played with list items, with uh, sites, user context, permissions, apps, and content types, and so much more. And we always wanted to provide more to achieve more from a client side perspective. So when using tools such as PNP PowerShell or CLI for Microsoft 365, we know that there is a big one which is called the client SVC. But we also know that it's hard to play with it since it um, requires a bunch of unreadable parameters. But yet we try to play with it. But to go further by still playing with um, your browser developer console, for example, you see uh, many and uh, many, many REST API calls made by by uh, by Microsoft 365, and we 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 can see that there are um, other features that can be reachable through API, such as Microsoft 365 groups, tenant administration, admin site properties, team channels, policies, and many more. But okay. I know you are going to you are going to tell me that there is already some uh, REST API documentation, which is called Microsoft Graph. Right, right. Okay, but the thing is that um, to in order to 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 explore the Microsoft Graph, you need Azure AD permissions with application dedicated context, which can be um, unreachable or difficult uh, to obtain. Um, for some developers, uh, depending on their context, on the company, on the IT uh, governance, security, um, this can this can be pay painful to to obtain. And also, it's uh, it's limited to specific options uh, depending on what you want to interact with. So now let's talk about uh, SharePoint admin REST API documentation, or well. Let's not talk about it since there is currently no existing documentation. But that doesn't stop us from um, digging up. So I was thinking um, about a use case to, um, to, to, to get involved into those um, undocumented admin REST API. Um, um, I thought about uh, the scenario where I'm an IT guy uh, which works with a tenant admin on a daily basis, and I'm working with the SharePoint Online tenant admin user interface from which I can get sites information, but um, I, if I want to go further into um, uh, working with sites properties, I need extra commands. So I need to use third party tools. I need to, to use command line interfaces. Also, the governance can be hard when you want, for example, to have a, to have a list of all the site collection app catalogs or to get all the uh, external users that are um, uh, um, declared in some SharePoint sites. And um, if you are working in IT departments um, with, uh, you, with uh, tickets submitted by users, uh, which need you to make some uh, repetitive actions, it can, uh, it can be uh, really uh, painful uh, in the long-term perspective. So my idea was to provide a solution that 
covers those uh, actions that can't be uh, available through the uh, user interface um, and without using a third party tool. That way I can take advantage of the those doc undocumented and REST APIs uh, without any backend application and with the current user context. So let's have a, a demo about this. Here I'm in my um, SPFX Teams web part app. Yeah, that's a bunch of buzzwords in it. But anyway, um, I got uh, this user interface when I can have access to all my uh, sites that exist on my tenants um, so, and also my what I call the special sites with which are, um, for example, the redirect sites when you have a rename, when you rename um, a, a SharePoint site URL. Um, I can have also my the, the point publishing hub, I can have my tenant app catalog here. And um, I have my templates, I have the information if it's a group connected site or not, which, okay, this is something that is already available in the native user interface. But what, what is not available is the um, uh, information if my this site collection has the app, the site collection app catalog enabled which is the case for this site here, for example. Um, I also have the information about which site is currently um, um, uh, configured as my home site, and also a bunch of extra options here that are available, that are available or not, depending on the site, uh, the, the, the site, um, um, targeted site, sorry. So, for example, um, I can uh, decide to uh, state, set a site as uh, read-only, for example. So here, uh, if I take my this site and decide it to lock it. Okay, now my site is supposed to be locked. It is to be in a read-only state. So here, for example, I, I can edit my page. I can add a new app, new page if I just make a refresh here. Now my site is in readable state, and you have also this beautiful message bar that states that my, that it's it has been uh, it, um, it has been updated as readable. Um, so so this is this is something that is interesting uh, from my perspective, but which is not available uh, from the from the user interface. I can also decide to uh, hide the search bar because you can have a, a specific need from uh, from some users that, that in, a, in some company that, that for which they are using another search uh, search bar or another uh, search engine uh, the other than Microsoft Search. Yes, it exists. And I can also decide to block the file downloads. And I can also have access to some extra options here. Like, for example, um, I can decide if I want to, dis to, to disable the comments on site pages, which is only available, for example, for the site, for the for, uh, communication sites. Uh, also, if I want to set this site as a home site here, um, I can decide to uh, disable the, 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 the the options to run the flow, um, Power Automate flows, and also to disable the sharing uh, capabilities, uh, but only for this the one site. Um, and this is this this is pretty interesting. Um, furthermore, I can through always through uh, admin REST APIs, I can handle the CDN, for example, which currently doesn't have an inter a user interface. Even if the private CDN will be handled by Microsoft in in the short term, um, it's it's still uh, an option that is available. I can also uh, decide to add a new origin. For example, let's say that I want to add master page origin. I have also the state of my uh, CDN because it can, it takes some time to be uh, fully enabled. So this is so, this is something that I wanted to 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 provide as an extra option. 
I can also handle the uh, organization themes. Um, for example, um, I, I can add a new new theme with color palette. Um, as you can see, I'm not a user interface uh, guy <laughs> developer, so it's pretty ugly. But you, this, this can the idea was to give you a sneak peek about what, what you can achieve. Uh, with um, with with just a few 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 lines of code and APIs, um, of course I can decide to edit my my theme or add uh, add add a new one here, uh, which are available. Then uh, when you want to change the look of a site, you have access to these themes as organization themes. And finally, I can have also my external users, which is um, typically um, um, an interface you know, that is only available through the M365 Admin Center. But here, from Sharpen Online um, Admin REST API, you can access to uh, those ex to, to this feature. So now, let's have a look at the code. So. Here I'm in uh, my uh, web part uh, definition uh, definition file, which is called admin SPO web part web part. Yeah, the name uh, is also is brand, is bring by the Teams Toolkit uh, generator. Thank you. Um, anyway, in my on init method, I'm uh, creating two contexts. The um, from with pnpjs. Um, which is declared here. The first is with the current SPFX context, and the second one is with uh, some with um, with Azure AD and MSL 1.0, uh, because it is currently this version that is supported by PenPGS. And I admit that I a little bit lied to you because for some endpoints uh, you have to um, request uh, some endpoints can only be requested through the um, uh, Sharpen Online admin URL. Uh, I'll show you a little bit later, but uh, uh, that's why I uh, declared two uh, contexts. So once uh, everything is uh, declared, we're going to the main web part here, uh, which only uh, consists in the, um, uh, in the declaration of my com main components. Uh, show before, uh, for like for example the sites uh, components, which when be, when loaded, um, I'm loading um, my all my sites. But as you can see here, I've also loaded on in my in my console log um, all the available uh, site templates, but also the existed environments, perhaps environments. Sorry. But here, for my need, I wanted to get all the site collection app catalog. So I'm going to uh, re uh, request uh, a search query with uh, with this uh, information, and also uh, getting the site properties for my SharePoint sites with this method. And uh, once everything is ready, I got I'm 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 designing my table, uh, my sites table, with all my extra options that I showed you before. Like, for example, how uh, to set a site as read-only here, and for which I'm uh, I'm sending a, a, a site property and calling a generic method, which is called update site properties, and which um, just calls a generic method, uh, which is called sites, where from the tenant uh, endpoints, and with the site ID as a property, I'm just sending the um, the site properties that I want to 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 update. So now, if I if I want to uh, block down block the down the file downloads, is the is the, is pretty 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 much the same. And now, if I want to uh, access to my uh, extra options, like uh, for example, set site as a home site, here in the more action components. Um, we got some properties depending on the site template. If it's a if it's a communication site, so for example, I can uh, disable the, the comments on the site on site pages, or uh, or set a site as a home site. In any case, uh, when I want to update site properties, I refer to this uh, generic method I just showed you before, and to set a site as a home site, I'm going to work with the SPH sites uh, endpoints 
which uh, provides me a method to update a site as a home site. This method, um, this uh, endpoint also provides me uh, the current uh, home site for my tenant. Um, and to, uh, to finish, I've uh, got the create group panel here, which, um, which uh, requests a group name, an alias, and a parameter to state if the group is public or not. This is the case when I want to uh, create a group for um, uh, a SharePoint team site, modern team site, which is not group connected. So I'm calling the create group site method from the group site manager endpoints and send the, these three parameters. And that's it for the demo. Just a, a work, um, overview of some error that I met when I testing my met, my my uh, some endpoints. I got the authentication method is not allowed. I got the method operation is not implemented. So. But it's a, it's available anyway. I got a specified method that's not supported, but it and, and again it's it was it's something that is available. I got the optional params which is not supported but available as a parameter, and I got the special one. The requested operation is part of an experimental feature that is not supported in the current environment, which is what what I wanted to get the the, the query the get on sites uh, from the tenant administration tenant endpoints. So maybe it's a new feature to come because get on sites. I don't know. So, a few examples of methods that are uh, that you can query that you can, that is that are available. You can you have the create group that I showed before. You had the site rename jobs, which which is called when you want to rename a site URL. You have the get available tax for sites in the uh, which is related to the compliance uh, center. You can uh, validate a group name uh, uh, through the alias before creating it with this method. You can get the members of uh, of M365 group. You can get the configuration of your of your Viva dashboard. You can get the recent list. You can uh, have a status if your current uh, site uh, as a parameter is a communication site or not. And you have many many more. So, what helped me to uh, achieve this? So I, I use of course the developer console. I also uh, make many requests with the Postman uh, through uh, with the access token, the SharePoint access token that I got through PNP PowerShell, but also the form digest value object from the SP page context info uh, JavaScript object, and a lot of patience. So to uh, to to finish, um, most commands uh, only works in post request, and for some commands they only work with the X request digest header. Um, some others only works with the um, admin and uh, URL, and some others request the metadata object uh, specified in the payload. And of course, all of these um, options depends on the API response. And that's it. Here, what really helped me. Um, you have the SharePoint REST API Metadata Explorer, which was provided by Sergey, which is a really, really awesome uh, interface that um, that 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 um, display all the um, objects, all the uh, endpoints available, and also the um, admin endpoints provided by the PNPGS, and my uh, the rep the repo for this the the the, 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 the the app that I use for my demo. And sorry to take a little bit time. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. I will jump in and just remind everybody that any API which is not documented is not <clears throat> supported by Microsoft. So yes, these are good exercises, and, and there's a lot of things where an APIs which are not unfortunately exposed to third party, um, you can call them, uh, but they might be actually get uh, updated without any further notice, uh, because as if they're not documented, that means that they are not intended to be used externally. But there's a lot of things, of course, from these APIs which we can learn, and also great reminder for Microsoft on, on hey, we need these APIs, we need these capabilities uh, for our solutions. Anyway, sorry for jumping there. Uh, Michael, uh, sorry, uh, uh, Marcin, you are next on the line. Right, Gary? No. Yes, uh, go for it, Marcin. And because you know, unsupported API is topic extremely close to my heart, <laughs> I I have to point out one thing because I've seen it was missing from what helped you. 
on every tenant, you have this magical thing called API slash metadata. And as you can see, this is an absolute huge, enormous XML file, which defines everything you can use in API. The same thing for API v2.1, which is, for example, support for taxonomy. If you want to learn a little bit more about taxonomy, support over REST API, here you can find everything. And as a chat on the top, but maybe I will not show that, you can have the same in admin portal. You have your tenant name slash admin dot sharepoint.com. You write underscore API slash uh, dollar sign metadata, and you get everything that there is to obtain. So if you are looking forward to go with that lovely, lovely road of unsupported API, have fun, go map. On that positive note, back to topic at hand, which is using React query in SPFX solutions. But as you may imagine, as the name suggests, because it's React query, you can use that only in solutions you are using React. So sorry, today, nothing interesting for adaptive cards, only old school development. Two words about myself, I'm Martin. You can find me on social medias. If you want, I highly encourage. Let's have some discussion about code. Having said that, what is the Marcin, 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 sorry, can you do a, a go to the presentation mode? Uh, because uh, it's much better when the recording. So uh, I will try. OK, I hope you can see it. Yep, OK, OK, no. thank you. And that's me. Thank you very much. What is the React Query? The React Query is a third party library that will help you with queries in React. By queries, I mostly mean queries to backend API. The whole idea is that usually, if you have experience with React, either functional components or class components, if you do something for SharePoint, you start every class or every functional component the same way. Either use effect and state is loading state obtained data, or you have component did mount, and in component did mount, you call for API, which of course is a lot of repetitive things. And you have to wonder about, oh, how I will <clears throat> deal with caching, how, how I will deal with concurrent requests to the same, uh, the same endpoint. And all of that magic, which someone extremely smart abstracted into one third party library. Before we move forward, because you can see it provides hooks for communication with backend API. The question is, what are the glorious hooks? And effectively, React hooks are a feature that React introduced, I believe, with React 16.8 to help you manage component state. The biggest issue with, uh, with such approach, with, with hooks, it, it requires binding, binding context. So also, I believe, since React 16.8, or in React 16.8, uh, React in, uh, introduced something like React Context, which can help you register your common dependencies, functionalities, and all of that magic so you can share it <coughs> across other components. Um, I'm not sure if that's <coughs> the best way forward. This is an open question. Also, I believe this is Important to note here that usually when I present something on such calls, I can very confidently say that it will scale. This is a great solution. If you want, go for it. Uh, this this time I didn't tested it enough in big scale to <clears throat> confidently say this will not break. It's definitely a concept worth playing around with, but approach with cautious. Having said that. Why would we use that? I mentioned a little bit of that before. It, it has beautiful uh, handling of retry policies, error, caching, concurrency. Also, it has amazing support for something called state requests, which I hope I will not forget to show. It simplifies the de development quite a lot because, as you will see in a moment uh, in the demo, you have only one hook per functionality. Uh, and by that, it also improves a little bit uh, state management for common requests. And I believe the most common requests are requests used for users because 
when you render news, uh, the dev bottom you usually want to render who created it. When you render items created by, modified by, events who created. So the endpoints related to users are very commonly uh, used all across your application. And it is, a, at least in my experience, quite a common issue that all of them are calling the same endpoint, but separately, and you just duplicate the uh, network throughput. So how to approach that at high level? As I mentioned, we would need something called context provider. To that context provider would have to provide or pass HTTP client. Uh, and this is a little bit of important point. Usually it requires authentication as a service dependency. And this would be very often async operation. So you cannot just create, create this uh, without any context. I will go into more details about this during demo. Once we have our HTTP client, we go with uh, wrapper around our original component with context provider, so we can provide context for our uh, provider. So we can provide context for our component. Then we implement the hook that is returning use square method, and use square method is the beef of our today's uh, or my today's uh, demo. Use query is the lovely method from React Query Library. Finally, we consume that in child components or in our root component, wherever we like, as long as it's below context provider. Then the last step is enjoy, and pure enjoyment of nice and simple solution for a complex problem. Having said that, let's take a look at our demo. In the meantime, I will check if there are any questions. Marcel, oh. as, we're, as we're running a little bit over, um, yeah, we want to make sure that uh, Matteo has time to, to do his demo. So, um, oh, yeah, just keep that in mind if that's okay. Absolutely. Three, four, four minutes. Okay. So, first of all, because that's the lovely demo, you can see I have a SPFX web part with one, two, three, four user cards. Those are new your custom user cards. We'll, we'll go in a second. But first of all, I wanted to show you that uh, state functionality. Because React Query will automatically detect if you have some state request, I have opened this page for about four hours. And you can see that every now and then, when it detects staleness, it calls React, not React, but Graph, to get new data about users. So this is how our web part looks like. Nothing too fancy, but as always, the devil is in the details. Let's go from the top. Our React Query sample, our web part. In our web part, we have render. And as I said previously, we have our almost out of the box uh, component. And instead of rendering it and passing it here to React DOM render, we create a context where we provide our graph client. and our created element, then we use the DOM to render our component. So this is the easiest way to provide context to our component. Uh, we can't see what you are sharing still. So we can see Visual Studio Code. Uh, yes, um, that's good. Yeah. Lovely. Um, and here on init, I <clears throat> initialize that graph client. I don't want to go too, into too much details about it, but I promise to you will see that await on init is async. So here we can actually await the uh, authentic authentication magic, which is lovely. Now let's discuss what that context provider is actually actually is. What context provider actually is? In context provider, as uh, as I've uh, shown. Seconds ago, we provide that magical graph client. Our graph client is simply a HTTP client, nothing to worry about here. But this query client, which as you can see is query client imported from React Query, here we can define some interesting things like stale time, cache time, retry policy. Again, don't want to go too much into details about it because we're short on time, but effectively that's it. Now the Use, uh, use user query, which returns use query. Again, use query from React query. Here you can see we actually bind together a few requests. We are batching it into one, and we are returning the user object. 
Now I mentioned that it will automatically handle concurrency, which I believe is the most important because if we go to React query sample, you can see we have four different users for, for, for different components, but all of those components are actually using the same use user query. Here in another user, here in component with nested user, and here in the simplest user, we every time we use only this use query method, and this handles all of that concurrency. So either we are rendering four elements or four components on our page, we are actually calling only uh, the, we are calling the endpoint only once. On that, because skin listener could uh, say that margin, or, or usually talking about unit tests and how we can unit test stuff when there is this big um, context provider dependency. Two ways around it. First of all, we can provide actually the whole context and in our to our context provider, just uh, pass mocked graph client, or which is even better for the isolation testing. Using just mock, you can actually um, mock the whole hook itself. So then for our uh, for our test, you will just render user as you would render it anywhere else. You will just uh, don't have or you will remove during the runtime dependency to context because you are mocking hook as a whole. On that note, I hope. That's enough. If there are any questions, I would love to talk about it. Ping me. But I will leave some time for the next presenter. Have a lovely evening. See you soon. Super demo, Martin. Thanks for uh, pushing through that. Uh, apologies for, for pushing you, but yeah, we're time is against us today. Uh, so let's move on to our next presenter. So Matteo, uh, please uh, share your screen. And for everyone who's in the community call, this is Matteo's first um, uh, speaking session on on the community call. So yeah, show show a bit of love for the for for new speakers uh, and and Matteo. Matteo, take it away. We can see your screen. Yeah, thank you, Veza. Thank you, thank you all. Thank you for having me here today. Um, let me please tell me if you can see my screen. Yeah, we've got that. Okay, thanks. So, uh, hello, everybody. Let me briefly introduce myself. I'm uh, I'm Matteo. I'm a software engineer at Avanad. And uh, I'm going to show you today a simple web part we based on a real case scenario developed for uh, one of our customers. And so basically, we needed a way to uh, allow our users to provide feedbacks uh, about uh, all the features and uh, and about all the tools they find uh, in their SharePoint site. So uh, we developed a simple web part, a really simple web part that uh, renders uh, a button in a fixed position on the right side uh, of the page, as you can see here. And uh, when the button is clicked, it, uh, it brings up a panel that uh, shows up a form for a, for a generic feedback about the site. Uh, there is a text area and a five star rating uh, component. And of course, a button that sends uh, the data to the backend. Um, for every other web part uh, within the page, uh, there is an accordion that contains uh, the form for, uh, for the related feedback. Now, the, the web part itself uh, is, uh, is quite simple. There's really nothing relevant to say about it. Um, what makes uh, this sample interesting from uh, our point of view is, is the way the panel is built, because there is no manual configuration at all. Um, the web part retrieves uh, all the content uh, from the page uh, directly from, uh, from the page itself. And this is done using uh, the, uh, the client side pages module of PMPJS that uh, allows us to work on client side pages with the find control function that mm, you can see that you can see here. We are able to find uh, and iterate over all the page layout controls that we found uh, within the page. Here you can see a snippet from uh, from the documentation, and uh, I will come back later to this when we when we see the code. This is a sample uh, of all the data retrieved uh, for a single web part that we found uh, on the on the page. And uh, as you can see, there are a lot of uh, useful information. There are info about uh, 
the web part position, the ID, the title, the description, and, and so on. And this is our, uh, is our actual implementation. Uh, we retrieve uh, all the content from the page. Uh, for each web part, we get the title and the order, which is basically the, the position within the page. All the duplicates are uh, removed. We don't want to ask uh, feedback for uh, different instances of the same web part. And of course, the feedback web part itself is removed uh, from the list because uh, in this particular case, it, it doesn't make uh, sense to ask uh, feedback about the feedback feature. And let me show you a quick demo. Uh, this is my SharePoint site. This is my home page. And as you can see here, I've added some web parts uh, in the home page. There is the new the news web parts, uh, the YouTube web part, some quick links, Yammer conversation, and uh, Bing Maps. And as you can see here, there is my my little feedback button in a in this sticky position in the on the right side of the page. If I open up the the sidebar, I will find the the generic feedback form. I can leave a comment here. Let's say I love this site. I can rate it, let's say for star, and of course, send my feedback. And for uh, all the web parts that uh, I have added on the page, uh, there are all the all my accordions with all uh, with the form uh, for the related web part. Uh, as you can see, there is the the form for uh, for the feedback about news, the form for the feedback about uh, the YouTube web part, and so on. Now let's edit the page, and let's add uh, let's say the recent documents web part. Sorry for the typo. Here it is my new web part. Let's publish the page again. And this time, I, if I open my sidebar, uh, I can see my a new form for my newly added web part, which is indeed the, the recent documents. Of course, I can leave uh, a comment. Uh, I can rate it and I can set another feedback about my new section. In the same way, let's edit again the page. Let's remove the news web part, for instance, publish the page again. And as you can see, the, uh, the form related to the news web part is now gone because, of course, my web part is, uh, is not on the page anymore. Um, let's jump quickly to the code. We saw before this meet this function, which is our build feedback from from uh, from page. And what's happening here? We uh, basically we get the client the client side page using the page URL that we retrieve from the from the web part context. Then we iterate over all the page layout controls we found on the page. We create uh, this uh, simple object, which has only the, in this case, the title and the position of the web part, and we push it in, uh, into, into a list. Then we remove all the duplicates as we see before, and we remove the, the, the feedback web part uh, itself. And finally, we sort the this list. We sort these uh, all the all the um, the page layout controls we find by by position, in order to show uh, the feedback forms in the same order uh, of the web part that the user found uh, in its own page. And the last thing, the last thing I want to show you is the the function that uh, actually send the feedback to to the backend, and this is uh, what you will find in the in the sample published on the sample solution gallery. And of course, this is just a sample, and and uh, as you can see, uh, the only thing it does is to print the the payload of the feedback to the to the console. Of course, uh, um, you are 
it, it's up to you what to do with the, with the data you collect uh, from your users. You can save them to a SharePoint list. Uh, you can uh, send them to a database. You can log them to Azure Application Insight and, and so on. In this case, this function always returns a success. That is what, uh, what the form show us uh, on SharePoint uh, with, the, with the success message. And I think that's it. That's all. Thank you. Great stuff, Matteo. Thank you very much for coming on and, and sharing that with us. Uh, and obviously, the first time that, that you've uh, spoken on this call, I hope it's uh, the first of many uh, and that you've encouraged other people as well to, to take that step like we talked about at the beginning. If you want to come and talk on the call like Matteo's done, then uh, just send a request in and uh, and we can get you on. Uh, but great example. Uh, love that. I particularly love the console.log at the end. Uh, <laughs> did make me chuckle a little bit. Um, but uh, yeah, leaving that open to, to everyone's uh, kind of imagination and you could take that further. Um, is is this available as a sample or, or will it? Uh, Yes, it's available on the Microsoft Sample Solution Gallery and uh, on the um, PMPJS repository as a as a sample on the as a web part sample. Yes, perfect. Thank you. So if you if you've liked what you've seen, go go take a look at the samples gallery. Right. Thank you Thanks. very much. Let's go back to the slides. Uh, so we, we're actually doing all right for time. Uh, we were a little bit rushed before, but uh, yeah, just want to say thank you to uh, to Michael, Marcin, and uh, Matteo who have uh, presented on today's call uh, to close off. Uh, so just say thank you for everyone who's attended today for your uh, conversation in the chat. As always, it's been uh, it's been informative. It's been hilarious uh, at times as well, uh, which is always good to see. Uh, the recording will be available in 24 hours on the uh, Microsoft 365 and Power Platform Community YouTube channel. So uh, take a look. Uh, Go along to the YouTube channel, and if you haven't subscribed, then yep, click that subscribe button and make sure that you get all of the the videos and recordings from uh, from these community calls. Uh, follow us on Twitter at Microsoft 365 Dev and at Microsoft uh, M365 PNP. The next Viva Connections and SPFX call will be on March the 9th, and our next community call, uh, the M365 and Power Platform call, will be next Tuesday on March the 2nd. Um, again, if you want to get information on all the community calls, uh, go to AKMS community slash calls and you will find all of the details for all of the community calls we have on offer. And with that, thank you very much.